In my Danny Lazowski video, I went over the 1998 Knoxville Nationals, where Danny would go on to win his first ever Knoxville Nationals, which would kickstart his career, and he would go on to win three more. Now for this video, I would like to talk about the 2004 Knoxville Nationals, which many of you probably remember it as it being Danny's final Nationals win, but many others remember it because of one certain incident that would shake the sprint car community to its core. This is the 2004 Curtis Boyer crash. Welcomes you to the 44th annual Knoxville Nationals, presented by the Midwest Ford Dealers. On August 14th, 2004, Knoxville Raceway was hosting its final night of the 44th annual Knoxville Nationals, with having 130 competitors throughout the four nights. And on the final night, having four preliminary mains, where the top four in the B main advanced to the feature. Kim Mock would have success in the E main, advancing to the D, alongside Bill Rose, Cody Branchcomb, Matt Morrow, and Bobby Mincer. Now on the first lap of the D main, as the pack reached the back stretch, it happened. Now the part that absolutely terrified me is when the crash ended, you could see Curtis Boyer slouch down, not moving a muscle. With many spectators frightened, thinking that they had just witnessed a fatal crash. The safety crew would get over to the drivers quickly, as you can see on the footage, right before they cut to Mike Lutz. You can see two ambulances and many more safety crew officials running over to the crash, and the broadcast would cut over to the crash around 30 seconds later, showing many people picking up debris off the track, with the broadcast not showing much of the crash at all not even a replay. Now there would be an update on Kim Mock, with the announcer stating that he was able to walk to the ambulance, and then it cuts to him in the back of the four-wheeler. Now many spectators claiming to be there that night said that they had put a tarp over Boyer's car, which of course would make many spectators fear for the worst. The broadcast would cut over to multiple interviews with the drivers to distract the audience as they clean up the debris. Now it would take a good while before they can get the cars back onto the track for the restart, and once they were back on the track, they would give an update on Curtis. Was involved in that incident, the 72X has been transported to the Knoxville Community Hospital. That's all we know at this time. If we receive any more information on Curtis's condition for the end of the program, we will certainly pass that along to you. Now, many people watching from home would take to the internet, showing their concern about the crash, discussing on what happened, and asking for updates. Even until recently, there has been so much speculation on what happened to Curtis after the crash. Some saying that his heart stopped while being airlifted to the hospital, some saying he was in a coma, and so much more. Honestly, there just isn't much credible information about the crash online, but I was able to find one sprint car forum discussing this topic that would give a credible quote from Knoxville Raceway's website. Budman8 says, Got this off of KnoxvilleRaceway.com. Curtis Boyer's condition, Knoxville, Iowa, August 15, 2004. Curtis Boyer is being evaluated at Iowa Methodist Hospital in Des Moines. He has suffered an internal head injury and remains in critical condition. We ask that you do not call the hospital. We will post further updates here when they become available. Meanwhile, keep Curtis in your prayers. Thanks, Ralph Capitani. But almost two weeks later, Nazak.com, I hope I'm saying that right, would make a forum about this crash, giving some updates on Curtis's condition. He had suffered severe head trauma and a fractured C4 vertebrae, and would be in critical condition for two weeks after the incident. Now, the day after this incident, some people claimed that the news had announced that a stock car driver had passed away in Des Moines, which many people would get this mixed up and think they were talking about Curtis. But sadly, a stock car driver did actually pass away. His name was Maynard Franklin Davis III. On August 14th, Maynard had sadly passed away after a crash at Iowa State Fair Speedway. His family described him as a loving father and husband, a racer, and an avid hunter. The track would carry on his legacy, having a memorial race for him every year, until the track's permanent closing in 2016. On August 30th, 2004, Sprint Car 72 would alert the forum that Curtis had been taken off the ventilation system and was able to start breathing on his own. And after this, it seems that Curtis would start to recover more and more and was healthy enough to drive in a couple races in 2005. And according to the driver database, he would continue to race until 2021. Now, after the horrific crash on the back stretch, there would be a good amount of more scary crashes that night including Billy Alley's wild ride in the B main, which I'm sure most of you have seen before. Wow. Shows the impact. You think you want to be a sprint car driver? 
And of course, like I said in the beginning of this video, Danny Lazowski would go on to win his final Nationals victory that night, becoming a very memorable moment for Lazowski fans. But to many people, this race has become completely overshadowed by that crash, with some claiming that the sound of the cars colliding still sticks with them to this day.